إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد تعرضوا لنفحات رحمة الله Our topic is expose yourself to the mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى so expect some questions, especially if I see you talking or busy with the, uh, my uh, iPhone or something like that. So if I ask you a question, respond inshallah, because we want to have sort of interactive inshallah if you can. If you are sitting in front of me, you will not be asked. <laughs> because, I mean, you already given me confidence that you're not worried and if you're sitting in the back that's the one I pick on <laughs> and don't complain at the end inshallah say Sheikh you embarrass me or something like that I mean, there's no embarrassment if I ask you a question you don't know just simply say I don't know وَمَا بِكُمْ بِالنِّعْمَةِ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said whatever ni'mah you have Whatever ni'mah, your beard is a ni'mah, your glasses is a ni'mah. I know you probably think about, well, I lost my vision, that's why I have glasses. But picture losing your vision without having glasses. So the glasses are a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything you have is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. This should be your motto. This is something that you should live by. Do good to others like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did good to you. And if you look, refer to the first ayah. Every blessing you have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have so much from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do good. It was good, brother, the first time. <laughs> so if you do good to people, do it as much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did good to you. Why you lowered it down? It was, it was fine before. Oh, so you were having that. Okay, okay. That's her crunching, brother. That's not that. <laughs> I'm going to make a dua for you, inshallah. Look how beautiful that dua is. أَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ أَنْ يَسْمَعَ لَنَا كُلَّ شَكْوَىٰ I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to any of our complaints. When I say complaints, I mean things that you like to be relieved from. وَأَنْ يَكْشِفَ عَنَّا كُلَّ بَلْوَىٰ And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve you from every bad thing you're complaining about. وَأَنْ يَتَقَبَّلَ مِنَّا كُلَّ نَجْوَىٰ And to accept from you any talk, dua that you give. وَأَنْ يُمَتِّعَنَا بِكُلِّ مَا نَهْوَىٰ And to make us enjoy everything we desire. وَأَنْ يُلْبِسَنَا لِبَاسَ التَّقْوَىٰ And to dress us with the garment of taqwa or righteousness. وَأَنْ يَجْعَلَ الْجَنَّةَ لَنَا هِيَ الْمَأْوَىٰ And to make Jannah our final residence. Say Ameen. 
Islam is the religion of knowledge. It is ilm wa amal. You know and then you act. It's not you act without knowledge. It's know and act. Fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah. Don't say la ilaha illallah. Know what la ilaha illallah means and say it. So it's not a just simple la ilaha illallah. And then you go and you say Merry Christmas. You don't know what la ilaha illallah means. You, if you want to know what la ilaha illallah means, you need to know the opposite of it. And that's the meaning, la ilaha illallah. Illallah, except Allah. But you have to know what la ilaha. No one deserves worship except Allah. So two parts. One affirmation and one negation. You negate any other deity, and you affirm the deity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the one who deserves your worship. Every ni'mah less than Jannah is going to go. Yani, if you want a ni'mah, you want it Jannah because the rest of it is going to go. It will not stay with you. Wa every bala. Did I speak three languages at the same time? Brother, you look like you speak Arabic and English, mashallah. Every bala. Wa kul bala. Duna nar. Fahua afia. Any test, any problem less than hell is really a blessing. Any problem you have, as long as you don't go to hell, what a blessing. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازِ If you're just scoot away a little bit from the hellfire, you're a winner. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts it. Every day before you sleep, I always remember and remind. Remind the ayah, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Ins, human and jinn, created to worship. So when you go to sleep, remember that you're created to worship. And when you wake up, remember that you're created to worship. So you make your dua and final counseling and final uh, repentance before you go to sleep because you may never wake up as we know the spirit is taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he may give it to you and he may keep it and when you wake up you make the dua which is basically telling you here we go again a new day remember what you created for so keep that ayah in your mind if you remember this ayah then you need to roll up your sleeves and get to work. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ فِرُّوا in Arabic, fly. Fly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, if you have an opportunity to do good in five minutes, and you can do it in one minute, do it in one minute. You have salah, for instance, dhuhr from 1.30 to 5 or so. When you want to do it? 1.30. This is firru ilallah. This is like every golden good opportunity. Do it as fast as you can. That's the meaning of go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, if you are not uh, repenting, you repent first and then you start rushing and doing good. If you want to do that, what do you need to take with you? Provision. And what's the best of provisions? Taqwa. You go to Hajj, right? The only thing you worry about is the two pieces wear on the top and wear on the bottom and your slippers and you're so busy with that you don't even know how to make tawaf. By the time you end up there and you have the stuff on you and I said, what do I do now? 
Where is the Sheikh? That is the least of the worry. So, Tazawadu fa inna khayra zadi taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is in Hajj. When you go to Hajj, he said, take your provision, and the best of the provision you take with you is taqwa, which means repent, ask people to forgive you, return the rights to others, and go ready and dedicated to do a hajj like the Prophet ﷺ did. Not like you did, or any book you read. No, you make sure like you do it, like Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. One of the most important things that you do in that is what? It's not like you go with any shaykh. No, you pick the shaykh whom you know will fulfill the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, not take shortcuts. Oh, you know, we can uh, leave early before uh, sunrise, and you can, you don't have to sleep in Mujdalifah, and you have, yeah, there is a permission to do this, and there is a, and every little rukhsa you take advantage of it, and you go to sleep in, uh, in Mina, uh, you go to the hotel in Mecca, you sleep there, and you come back in the morning. What kind of a hajj is this? You're not going to. And yeah, I mean, I'm not asking you to search or look for hardship, but uh, follow the sunnah. If you follow the sunnah and there is absolute easiness in it, do it. But don't take advantage of others. So, you prepare yourself and you provide yourself with taqwa and that is the best of it. As the scholar said, the houses, the families are not built on the beauty of the wife or on the beauty or good looking of the husband. It is built on taqwa. Look how the Prophet ﷺ in marriage, he said, look for the righteous one. And for the woman, he said, look for the one with good deen and khuluq. Righteous and righteous provide, more than likely they're going to have a righteous son. I know you're going to come up and say, oh, Sheikh, uh, what about uh, the son of Prophet Noah? There's always an exception. Always an exception. But this exception is a test. Allah, the Prophet وسلم, told you, Al Ain Haq, envy, is a reality. So, what does the brother do? He has millions of dollars, he would not dare to buy a car, a good car. He can afford it, but he won't buy it. Why? Because people are going to envy him. And he cannot buy a good home, because people are going to envy him. And he cannot wear a nice suit, people aren't. And he cannot buy that shirt, which is $600. I mean, I don't blame you for that, you don't need it. So people will envy him. No, 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 no. The Prophet ﷺ told you there is an envy, but he told you, carry a gun. There are robbers everywhere. Carry a gun. Put an alarm. There is a way to protect yourself. So you have dua. The Prophet ﷺ told you, do it. Some people would come and say, Sheikh, I made the dua and I still got envied. That's the test. Uh, just like you shoot and the trigger doesn't. Pull. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you in prosperity and adversity. But usually the dua majority works. For some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test it. And He tests you in any way you want. But you have an answer. So with your million dollars, brother, enjoy yourself with a car and a home and a shirt and everything. And don't worry about people saying mashallah or not mashallah. Whatever they want to do, because you can't control people. Some people envy without intention. Some people envy with intention. And some people, you even tell them to say, say mashallah, and they will not say it. And they will start going, yeah, you think I'm going to envy? Brother, just say mashallah and get it over with. Let's not talk about it or argue about it. Just say mashallah. Oh, so now you're accusing me. Oh, never mind. And then you exit the parking lot and boom, you had an accident. Who are you going to refer it to? To that person. And it may not be from that person. 
just a coincidence. So if you start getting that shaitan whispering to you, you will not enjoy your life at all. Take your gun with you, which is dua, and live your life the way you want to live. So this is the taqwa. Also, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that the best knowledge you can get is the knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the knowledge about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is why aqidah, your creed, is the most important thing. Uh, if you are the biggest scholar on earth and your aqidah is corrupt, you're whole corrupted. If your aqidah is good and you are the worst person on earth, you're still ahead. Because aqidah destroys your religion if it's corrupted. And sins, you get punished for it, eventually you go to Jannah. So make sure that your knowledge, especially about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is taken from the right source and your aqidah is straight. What's the straight aqidah? Aqidah of the companions and the followers of the companions, Sahaba wa Tabi'i, how they refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how they understand the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how they call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's so simple. It's so simple. We have guidance in everything from the Prophet sallallahu and from the companions. So the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called innam al-ilmu bit-ta'allum. Knowledge is sought through seeking knowledge. Wal-hilmu bit-ta'allum. And patience is sought through practicing patience. And وَمَا يُرِدِ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you, then He will facilitate a way for you to seek knowledge. So if you find yourself attracted to knowledge, and you start want to learn, and want to memorize, and want to study, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intending good for you. Don't listen to those people who say, oh, you don't have to do this. Oh, you know, you can read a book. Oh, you can sit. Oh, the internet is right here. Oh, with the push of the button. Oh, brother. People who do that, it's because they never took that path. A person was given khatiras and stuff with minimum knowledge he has. When he decided he wants to study, as soon as he studied a little, six months, a little over, and all he's studying is really Arabic. When I asked him to give a khatir or a lecture, he said, no, I don't qualify. I said, wow, you did that five years ago. Yeah, I never realized how ignorant I was. I said, wow. Maybe that's why the scholars say the more knowledge you gain, the more ignorant you feel, if you are sincere. Because when you get into the knowledge, you see how big the knowledge is and how little you know. You look at yourself, you don't even have 1% of what you're supposed to even have, the basics. And the only way you understand that is when you get there. So when you want to seek knowledge, you find everyone around you who distract you from seeking knowledge. It's because they're ignorant, so they have no value of the knowledge. It's like someone, you give him a, a piece of uh, diamond, and he has no idea the value of it, and he just thinks it's a piece of rock or shiny rock, and he just throws it away. Put in the trash, because he doesn't know the value of it. The same thing was seeking knowledge. You only understand the importance of knowledge when you seek it. You only understand the value of it when you see and you dive into it. And the same thing with sports. You know, the first time I personally shot billiard, used to see a brother taking that stick and poking one ball into the other and look at how silly and how ridiculous the whole game is passed by one in college when I was talking 
And he said, here, Sheikh, take, hit that, let's see. So I said, oh, you mean, I took that and I missed the ball completely. I did not hit it once, twice, three times. Then I realized it's not really as simple as I thought it was. And the same thing with anything you do when you don't know it. Uh, same thing with uh, sports, with computers, with anything. And knowledge is no difference. Actually, knowledge is a lot harder than that because as a beginner, when you, when you memorize the Qur'an, you start saying, Khalas, if I memorize the Qur'an, I got it made. Then you say, wait a minute, no, I need to understand tafsir. So if you read the tafsir of the Qur'an, you say, What's, what else left? Then after you go, oh my God, no, I need to learn some hadith. And you learn some, and then you start getting, you said, whoa, and then you start reading the qualification of mufti, the qualification of a teacher, the qualification of a da'iyah, and everything said, what do I have? Nothing. And when you look at yourself and you see the scholars before us, you can imagine Shafi'i rahimahullah died when he was 54 years old. And we look at ourselves, and I go, what did I do, really? In Nawawi, 44 years old, every house has their book. Every person knows him, except the FBI. One time they saw his book in Jordan, they wanted to arrest the person, because Nawawi means atomic. So he has the book, he read it, and he said, this guy looks hefty. He's, pray, he's preparing an atomic bomb or something. So the Imam in Nawawi, rahimahullah, 44 years old, and everyone is talking about him, and he is not really dead. He's dead from the scene, but he is alive in our hearts because everyone is saying rahimahullah when you mention his name and when you read from him. Same thing when you talk about <coughs> obligations. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves from you. He loves your obligation the most. So focus on the daily prayers, focus on Ramadan, focus on Hajj, focus on Zakat. Make sure you know how much money you have. Make sure you know that you paid Zakat on it or not. Because if you don't pay Zakat, there's no blessing in your money. And you are exposing yourself to huge sin. Zakat is the right for people. So before you focus on sunnah or uh, yani, uh, nawafil, focus on obligation because that's the most Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love you, then start doing extra from each obligation. Like you have five daily prayers, do extra prayer similar to that, like nawafil, like rawatib and all of that. Same thing with uh, zakah, donation. Same thing with hajj, repeat it. Same thing with fasting. Talk about fasting, we'll talk a little bit about that too. Uh, you know, I thought the food is here, maybe someone is fasting, wants to break his fast, but uh, how many people fast on Saturday here? I don't think uh, anyone dares to fast on Saturday. You dare to fast on Saturday? Well? It's scary if you fast on Saturday. Well. Tayyid, uh, remember death. A lot of people don't remember death. And that's why they hardly say Astaghfirullah, and they hardly do good, and they hardly return the rights to people because death is absent. And how many people, so many people that I read papers from them, they want something or want to do something, and in that paper it says, you know, do such and such, uh, life is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to rush and do this, I want this. And you read that and most of them died before they even accomplished what they wrote. So death is, is a reminder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal nasu attaku rabbakum wakhshaw yawma. Have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think of a day. La yajzi walidun an walidi. Father cannot benefit a son. Wala mawludun huwa jazin an walidihi shay'a. Zakallah khair. And no son will benefit his father at that time. 
إن وعد الله حق truly the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come true فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا don't be deceived with this life and the glamour of this life ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور and don't be deceived by the shaytan so this is a reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said at that time your cash will not benefit you and your children will not benefit you and guess what they are the biggest assets right now for you is your money and your children uh, you feel you got it made if you have it but in reality Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take both in any minute so when you think of death don't look at your age and don't look at your health and don't look at your money because some people oh you know he died because he couldn't uh, he did not go to the doctor or he could not afford the doctor oh, Allah Habibi the doctor himself needs a doctor <laughs> yeah it's so silly when one time my doctor told me my doctor said I was like oh you have a doctor <laughs> Maybe that's the one I need to go to. <laughs> you know, the doctor of the doctor got to be a better doctor. This is like a student and a teacher. If you know your student has a teacher, why would you learn from a student? Go to the teacher. But maybe it doesn't work that way. But, you know, it's, it's, it's silly, yeah. It, it's a reality. So a son and a father will not benefit one another at that time. Look at... Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, Ana, inna la nandur ila aqwal al-ulama, walakin nandur ila himmatihim. We don't look at the quotes of the ulama, we look at their practical action. You know how they say, action speaks better than words. So, it's not like what he wrote in his book, it's what he did in real life. Because anybody can write and anybody can claim. So this is how we know it. And we said our religion is knowledge and action or action based on knowledge. <inaudible> you have intention and you have amal. And فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ All of those will tell you that Islam is the deen of knowledge. So, if you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you dislike for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you deprive for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have perfected iman. What does that mean, Shaykh? How do you give, how do you deprive for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah, how? Can I have five dollars to buy some cigarettes? I deprive him. It's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if he says, can I have five dollars to eat? I'll give it to him. If I dislike for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I dislike an action that you do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not for a personal thing. It's not because you did not give me or you did not listen to me or uh, you're not treating me uh, like such and such. No, it's not personal. It is you do something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like. So I dislike you for that. And dislike doesn't mean I will go, I will oppress you, or I will be unjust to you, or I cannot talk to you, or I cannot deal with you. No, it is until you come. Just like, think of it this way. When you see someone you like, what do you tell him? Brother, I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did you say that? Because you saw him doing something good. Why can't you say, brother, I dislike you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? <laughs> Try it and see how many friends you have. <laughs> no, really. I mean, if you can do it for this, you should be able to do it for that. Sahaba used to do that. They see someone doing something wrong. 
أكرهك في الله This word is even harsher in Arabic Or أبغضك بالله And then when someone tells me that I say Astaghfirullah al-Azim What did I do? You did such and such I'll fix it I take it to heart I mean uh, It's not personal thing between me and him It's to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He should dislike that For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala But if I see him doing something wrong And I ignore it or, even worse than that, I start giving a lecture how kind you should be to disobedient people. What message am I giving him? Continue on doing it. Now, yes, there are ways to stop evil. And there is kindness in doing that. But when I give all of that without doing anything, then I'm giving the wrong message. It's like, yeah, I take him aside and I talk to him person to person and I advise him from the bottom of my heart and I would not insult him in front of people and all of that. But what I'm talking about is some people will give you a lecture when you advise someone with proper conditions and they make you look bad as if you should ignore everyone and leave them on their own and not enjoin good and forbid evil. By the way, this is what the trend nowadays. That's the meaning of, uh, what do they say? Don't judge me. You know what, what is the meaning of don't judge me? No enjoining good, no forbidding evil. That is 100% intended from that. Because they're not even talking about judging. It's like I see the sister with no hijab. And you advise her with something. And she tells you, don't judge me. What am I judging her with? Did I say you go into hell? Did I say you're corrupted from the heart? Did I? You don't have hijab. A blind person says that. You're declaring it to the world. I'm not judging anything. I'm telling you a reality. A person cussing. You tell him, Attaqillah. He said, don't judge me. Oh, maybe your tongue is filthy and your heart is pure like honey. <laughs> uh, yeah, seriously. So, when people use that, they're basically telling you, mind your own business and think of the disobedient people as righteous people. And the righteous people are corrupted people. You know why? Because when, you, when they want to defend, they will tell you, so and so have hijab and she does such and such and such. So and so doesn't have hijab and mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. Conclusion, girls don't wear the hijab because it seems like this is the right thing to do. Same thing with men. Yes, it is true. You may have a person who's not doing some, some yani, leaving uh, some command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do other things. Yeah, that's also an exception. But at the same time, you still have to enjoin good and forbid evil even if the person in front of you is an angel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet, Ya ayyuha nabi ittaqillah. Did the Prophet sallallahu sin? No. Ittaqillah means... Even if you have taqwa, have more of it. So anyone from us is sinful. In a sense that, does it matter how much we try, we still fall, so we need to enjoin good and forbid evil. Something I want to remind you today of, which is, I see it, yani, an opportunity, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us witness it, which is Monday. It happens Monday. Who, who knows what Monday happens? Probably the first day of the Hijjah. Are you sure it's Monday or Tuesday? You think, and I think Monday. <laughs> we'll see who thinks right. So the moon will decide, inshallah. But they already figured it out, right? Uh, somebody saw the moon. Already. 
Well, Monday or Tuesday, this is the beginning of the Hijjah. The Hijjah is really the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I want you to expose yourself to. Because what does that mean? Look what the Prophet sallallahu said. He said, اُطْلُبُ الْخَيْرَ دَهْرَكُمْ Do good all of your life. وَتَعَرَّضُوا لِنَفَحَاتِ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ And expose yourself to the breeze or to the breaths of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يعني the certain times and certain days and certain places that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great and multiplied. You know, certain prayer in Mecca is not like prayer here. Dua uh, when you're in your sujood is not like dua when you're not. Uh, prayer at the end of the night is not like any two rak'ah any time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you specific times and places and all of that for reasons. Number one, to give you an opportunity to repent. To give you an opportunity to make up for what is left. It's like it's like uh, you missed out on so many sunan. How are you going to catch up on that? Well, when you go pray in, uh, in the haram, each, each, each fard is 100,000, <laughs> you're going to catch up with everything. So it makes me take advantage of that. When some days come like uh, the last 10 nights of Ramadan, and you have one night, the action in it equivalent to 83 years plus. So because, how long are you going to live, brother? Yeah, I mean, what do you, honestly, how much you guesstimate? I, I know you don't know, brother. You think, why do you think? <laughs> I, I can, brother, how long do you think he's going to live? <laughs> Well, sometimes you can look at the person and say, I think he's not going to make it. <laughs> yeah, how long, brother, you think? <laughs> Just guess, yeah, of course. No, if you can give us exact, that would be nice. <laughs> can <I> guess. <laughs> I think, I think the best way to do it is to follow the sunnah. Prophet said, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي مَا بَيْنَ السِّتِّينَ إِلَى السَّبْعِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مَا يُجَاوِزُهُنَّ 60 to 70. And لَقَدْ أَعْذَرَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مَنْ بَلَّغَهُ السِّتِّينَ If you live to be 60, you have zero excuse to not repent and to not focus on doing good and prepare yourself for death. Because he told you this is the time that you, majority of people die, and you find yourself indulging in haram, you have no excuse. 60 years you lived and you don't get the message, or you don't get it, that's not. So 60 to 70, we know that. Tayyip, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam's people time, how much they lived, if Prophet Nuh alayhi salam exceeded a thousand, I know you're going to say 950. 950, his da'wah. Add to it his life when he started the da'wah. So, so the average time of the people at that time, 500 plus. You know, if someone, five, oh, he's so young, mashallah, he's rahmatullah alayhi. How old was he? Oh, 780. 780. Yeah. Tayyip. How can you catch up with a righteous person from the people of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam? He lived 800 years worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you lived 60, 70 years. When one of the companions died and his friend died a few days or maybe a week after or so and some of the companions said they will be together, he said, and where is his salah from his salah and his fast from his fast? It's like 
he passed him by so much work in those two day, a two, a few days or a few weeks that he lived after him. So if someone lived 800 years and you lived, uh, definitely he passed you. So how can you catch up with him? With the breaths of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do Qiyam the last 10 days of Ramadan for 10 years, that's 10 times 883, that's 830 years of worship just from Ramadan. So you catch up. If you go pray uh, one rak'ah, yani, <laughs> can you imagine yourself praying five daily prayers in Mecca? 100,000 prayers. How many years is that? If you were to divide it in every year, uh, five times seven times 30, and see how many a year. And look how many years of worship were just doing one day of worship there. So this is an opportunity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ My mercy encompassed everything. So when he said that, we can see this rahmah. That you do a tiny deed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it huge. And that is the exact thing he does in those 10 days of the hijjah So you need to plan for it. Look at the hadith that the Prophet said. He said, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامِ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحْ فِيهِنْ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْعَشْرِ No days in the year righteous deed more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than doing the deed in these days. Companions, they want to make sure. So they said, الجهاد في سبيل الله يا رسول الله not even equivalent to jihad he said الجهاد في سبيل الله so you do a righteous tiny righteous deed it's equivalent to jihad the prophet وسلم, said a drop with the blood with the drop of a blood of the mujahid when he dies enters the jannah with the first drop of blood. This is the reward, protected from the punishment of the grave, entering the Jannah immediately. So, with a small deed, how many small deeds can you do? You can do a lot. So why don't you prepare for it? Why we take preparation so much for the nights of Ramadan, last 10 days? 10 days of the Hijjah, the first 10 days of the Hijjah are better than the 10 days of Ramadan, last 10 days of Ramadan. So when we look at the rewards in these days, you can conclude easily that you need to prepare yourself for it. The preparation for it Mentally, you want to think of fasting. You want to think of Quran, like 10 days. Why can't you finish the Quran? Really, plan 10 days. Each day I read three juzu. How many? Let it take you an hour to read three juzu. If you know how to read, it should not take you more than an hour. Usually, a juzu 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes for someone who reads fluently. Let it be two hours. This is a special time. Qiyam al-Layl, why can't you wake up before Fajr and pray two rak'ah at least every day? Kindness to your mom and dad, kindness to husband, kindness to wife, kindness to children, uh, solving problems with people, taking care of the need of others. Charity. But if I tell you how good giving charity is sometimes wallahi when, when when i want to prepare something it's like every time you think of a hadith it catches you to another hadith it makes you feel so wonderful when you see how valuable giving charity is to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it's so easily understood if you understand our love for money, 
most of our problems because of money. Most of our love to one another because of money. This brother donates good. This brother takes care of your bill. This brother invites you. This brother is generous. This brother is stingy. This brother doesn't pay a thing. This brother is so rich, but he doesn't spend anything. Have a problem with you over what? Money. Give up that dollar, ya zalami. Wallahi, some cases I have, it's like, are you serious? You go into ruin a friendship of 20, 30 years over a few hundreds of dollars? You go in to take it to court over a few hundreds of dollars? Yes. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, he told us something special. He said, Inna li kulli ummatin fitna. Every ummah has a test, a trial. Wa fitna tu ummati fi maliha. And the test of my ummah in their wealth. Yani, it is a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, Hal adullukum ala tijara. Brother, what kind of internet do you have here? Disconnected. Hal adullukum ala tijara tunjikum min adabin alim. What's the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said? Tujahiduna fi sabilillah bi amwalikum. First jihad he asked you for is your wealth. And this dua that I told you, if you do something good, مَا مِنْ عَمَلْ مَا مِنْ أَيَّامَ الْعَمُلُ الصَّالِحْ فِيهِنْ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ قَالُوا وَلَا الْجِهَادِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالُوا وَلَا الْجِهَادِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا رَجُلْ خَرَجَ بِمَالِهِ وَنَفْسِهِ وَلَمْ يَرْجِعْ بِشَيْءٍ He mentioned his money, he said, and good action in these 10 days may be equivalent to someone who sacrificed his life and his money. That's double shot. Yani basically he lost the two most beloved thing in his life. Money and himself. Islam came to preserve five necessities. الضروريات الخمس كل أوامر الدين جاءت للحفاظ على الضروريات الخمس الحفاظ على ديد take care of your religion النفس your life العقل your brain المال your wealth وال الشر النسل which is your offsprings and your family every command in the Quran and the Sunnah it's taking care of these five so money is so important and valuable before the prophet وسلم, died he said muslim ala muslim haram damuhu wa maluhu wa his blood which is his life what's after that his cash a penny you take from your muslim brother unrighteously or without right is huge oppression in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A word you say against the honor of your other Muslim accusing him, some people they cuss words, you might, uh, someone might cut you off and you call him son of an angel. You know what you did? You slandered him. You accused with zina. That's 80 lashes. For a word you said, you're not even thinking about it simply because you're angry. Sometimes people say it to themselves in the family, jokingly. And you don't understand. You refer to that simply because you don't really pay attention to it and it is that. So it is a huge thing. Siyam, fasting, during those 10 days. Fasting is such 
an important thing to do because fasting is really sacrificing what you love in this life. It is really tadhiya. Tadhiya is to give up something you love for someone you love more. I wake up in the morning, even though I love sleep, but I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than sleep, so I wake up. So those people who don't wake up, conclusion, they love sleep more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people who are cheap, they don't donate, they love their money. Well, that's why the Day of Judgment, the Prophet ﷺ said, was sadaqa burhan, charity is a proof, a proof of what? Your faith. It's like, oh Allah, you know me, you created me, I love money, here I am giving it to you the way you commanded me, to prove to you I love you more than the money. That's the thing that a lot of people don't pay attention to. The same thing fasting. Oh, Scott. What up? <laughs> Your dad is a sheikh, sheikh. Takillah. <laughs> so, uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm not recording, so relax, it's okay. <laughs> that was recording, sure. Oh. <laughs> it's him. <laughs> Why fasting is so important? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fasting is special for me, and I reward for it. So when you fast, angels write, Muhammad fasted. Did you do that when you were young? <laughs> Not really, brother. We just don't remember it. You were too, you were crying on my, my mom told me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I agree with you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, fasting for me. So when you fast, angels would write, Muhammad fasted. But how much he gets? No idea. A companion came to the Prophet sallallahu and he said, teach me something so special Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. He said, عَلَيْكَ بِالصِّيَامِ فَإِنَّهُ لَا عِدْلَ لَهُ I enjoin upon you fasting, there's nothing like it. So make sure you fast during those 10 days. When they start? Monday. You know what Monday is? Or oh, Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> well, subhanallah, he listens for the parking lot. <laughs> Monday or Tuesday. So take care of fasting, take care of lots of charity. Which means yani, every opportunity participate in it. Don't go and dump all of what you have in one opportunity and after that start scratching your head. Give something here, give something. You don't know when you're sincere. Sometimes you give, you're not that sincere. So give it in all opportunities and knock all opportunities. Give for school, give for masjid, give for poor people, give for all kinds of things. That way you diversify and you have better chances. And you make it, a, I'm not gonna say like lottery, but yeah, and you give it in different ways where you get different opportunities, inshallah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Arafah, if you cannot fast too much, then make sure you fast the day of Arafah. Two years will be erased. A year past and a year to come. You know what that means? If you fast Arafah, brother, you're ahead. Your next year is forgiven already. Yani anything you want to do, <laughs> you're forgiven. Can you do that? And why not? Prophet ﷺ said, a year passed and a year ahead. You do what you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you. Righteous person, 
would think, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that to me, I'm going to worship him more. Uthman ibn Affan, when he donated one-third of the army, Prophet ﷺ said nothing would harm Uthman again. He stopped going to Jama'ah, right? <laughs> Stop. He intensified, he gave more. Same thing with all the companions. Let me, what, is, is it time for Maghrib? Time. I'm going to conclude, inshallah. Here is the equation for those people who love math. Equation of life. فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَاي equals فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى You follow my command, it equals you will not be misguided and you will not suffer. Second equation. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي equals فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ You turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have a miserable life here and there. So make sure that follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continue to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be an example to others. Ibadur Rahman, and that's the conclusion. Their final dua, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا It's not like, make me from the muttaqeen. No, make me an imam. And this is not just an imam here. And no, an imam, a leader, someone that people look up to and learn from, ahead of everyone. Just like Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu an, he lived he, he accepted Islam when he was 18 and he died when he was 34. And the day of judgment, the Prophet ﷺ said he would come a distance of how far you can throw a rock ahead of the scholars. Yani you could say from here to midway in the parking lot, he's there and they are behind. That's how. أَعْلَمُكُمْ بِالْحَلَالِ وَالْحَرَامِ So... Live a wonderful life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have one more day, inshallah, uh, if it's Monday. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you life to live until then. Make your plan and intention from now. If you die, may Allah forbid, then it will count for you, inshallah, as if you've done it. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. If you have a question, we'll give you one question. When you want to die, right? <laughs> this is the ulama said for the taghlib. Taghlib, yani it's actually fasting nine days, not ten. But because nine is more than one, so the one is included as if they're ten, as if they're ten. So this is for the taghlib, and at the same time, uh, the one who will count for you 10, he forgave you for one, so you still get 10 if you want, with the intention. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for instance, like some scholars say that you can't fast on Saturday, for those who take this opinion, if Arafah comes on Saturday, he doesn't fast and he still got the reward of Arafah. Because what made him not fast? The one who told him to fast. Makes sense, right? How long are you going to live anyway? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar
أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد